Hey, everybody, I'm Chris Fafalius, and I'm the producer of Chris Makes a Podcast and the host of the One Hit Thunder Podcast. And I'm Matt Kelly, host of Horror Movie Night and the producer slash the head of content for the Geekscape Podcasting Network. Between the two of us, we have, believe it or not, 25 years of podcasting experience, and we want to help you start your own podcast. We know podcasting, and we want to share that knowledge with you. So whether you're new to podcasting or you want some feedback on your currently active podcast, we want to help. Or perhaps you're just overwhelmed with all of the editing work. Well, we can help you with that also. You can check out our website at weknowpodcasting.com for more information. We're excited to help your podcasting dreams become a reality. Dylan. Hey, Matt. So before we jump in to discussing today's St. Patrick's Day episode of Christmas 365, I wanted to do a a, a mini book review, we'll say, because I've got maybe 50 pages left in Let It Snow, and I think you've completed reading Let It Snow. Uh, yeah, I I, I got to a point where I was kind of bored with it, so it became more of a Is it the third segment? Yeah, it became more of a skimming than a uh, than a reading. Honestly, I can kind of sum up my review in this. I appreciate the book. I'm glad it gave us the movie. But like as I was reading the book, I just kept thinking, man, I would much rather just go watch that movie. Yeah, no, that's kind of the the takeaway that I got from it as well. One of the things that I I found myself wondering was, would I be more forgiving to the book if instead of it being three short stories? if those short stories were like chapter by chapter split out across the book, because I agree with you, like that third segment is just not that interesting and it's not worth like a hundred pages. Like I thought that the first two stories were fine. They were cutesy. I could see like the little bits and pieces that were pulled to like make the movie. And that was kind of fun where it's like, Oh, they got like this storyline from like, this piece of the book and stuff, but it's, it's definitely not the movie. It's not, it's not as uh genuine and fun as the movie. And I agree with what you're saying almost as if they like, did it like they did the movie or if they did like they did with trick or treat where it's yeah, like, or even like it's, with, it's throughout the whole thing. Or like the book, um, Nick and Nora's infinite playlist where you jump back and forth between like Nick's perspective and Nora's perspective every yeah. chapter. Like if you did that, where it was like, This chapter's written from the perspective of this character. This chapter's from this character's perspective. This chapter's from this character's perspective. But then we jump back to that first character, and then you start to see how the stories are intertwining as the chapters. Like, I think that there was a way to do it that could have been more interesting. But anyway, we're not here to talk about the book Let It Snow. Just getting that out of the way so we don't have to do a full episode on it. What we are here to talk about is something that I picked. I mentioned this on an episode that we had recorded earlier. Dylan was like, why the fuck aren't we watching that right right the fuck now? (laughs) So I picked Daria season three. I believe it's, it falls in this weird realm. It's technically episode three, but it aired fourth. But it it is Depth Takes a Holiday. Okay. A little bit of the background of this before we jump in to your thoughts and feelings on it. Uh, Season three of Daria is a very weird season of Daria. The show, for the most part, is fairly grounded in reality, as or at least as much reality as a cartoon can get. Season three has two episodes that the fans have declared non-canon. This is one of them. The other one is actually the first episode of the season, which is a giant musical episode. Both of those kind of really stepped out of the realm of what Daria was known for. And we get this weird episode, which at the end of the day is the only holiday episode of Daria. So they decided to make it every holiday in one 20 minute cartoon (laughs) so i'm looking online and it's telling me that this episode originally aired on march 10th 
Was yes. that like in in ninety nine? Was that St. Patrick's Day or yeah, is St. Patrick's Day? So I might be an idiot on this because it's a holiday that I care very little about. Is is St. Patrick's Day one of the ones where it's always the same day, or is it one of the ones like Thanksgiving where it's like you know whatever this Thursday is of this specific month? All right, so this year it's March seventeenth. Last year it was March seventeenth. <laughs> Hold on. And in 1999, it's March 17th. All right, so apologize to our listeners for the two idiots <laughs> that you're listening to right now. When you don't drink, you don't give a shit. And like that's coming from me. My last name is Kelly. I'm as Irish as they yeah. can come. I could not care less about St. Patrick's Day. I'm never wearing green on March 17th. I don't drink. A few times I've been drug out to bar crawls with friends, and I was miserable. My favorite St. Patrick's Day... Um, it, was, it took place in Baltimore, and I do drink, but not like – I'm not like, St. Patrick's Day, woo! Like, I'm not yeah. getting like – I'm not getting lit on St. Patrick's Day. But I went to Baltimore, and the Mighty Mighty Boston's were playing for free. So I 100% thought that St. Patrick's Day was much like Easter and like, oh, does it take – Or Thanksgiving, just ever-changing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And Easter's the worst, too, because it's like, is it in March this year or is it in April this year? Like, Yeah, at least Thanksgiving, you always know it's November. Yeah, true. Dylan, what are your thoughts on this very strange, strange, many consider the worst episode of Daria? So I have not watched Daria in, it has to be like 20 years, like at this point. I was never like, oh my God, Daria's on, like turned it on. But out of, like, this particular type of animation, Daria was always my favorite because it was so grounded in reality for the most part. Until yeah. this episode, of, co- of course, I was watching. <laughs> I have very vivid memories of Daria's take on the Cropsey urban legend. I don't remember what episode yes. it was, but but for some reason, that's, like, the only clip that sticks out in my mind. It's Legends, Legends of the Mall. Okay. One of those things that, like, I guess I would rank Pee-wee's, Pee-wee's uh, Big Adventure up there as well. One of those things that just kind of, like, creep you out as a kid, even though they may it may not be, like, inherently creepy. Like, now you look back and you're like, well, that was dumb for that to creep yeah. me out. But but, <laughs> <laughs> but it did. I, I will say, Large Marge, genuinely terrifying to this day. So, Death Takes a Holiday. I guess I would have to agree with the fans. I texted you afterwards, and the episode is bonkers. But it was almost like it was also kind of boring at the same time. Like I kind of wanted them to ramp it up and just go for it. Just give me like full blown just Daria and Jane's reactions to bonkers ass situations. And I don't think I fully got that. I both agree and disagree. So I am definitely a depth takes a holiday apologist. Yeah, I don't think it's the best episode, but I do think that there are some really, really, really funny lines scattered amongst it. Yeah. The one line that I always think there's there's two lines that I think of in this episode. One is towards the very beginning and one is towards the very, very end. The one in the beginning, Daria asks Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day, where's Holiday Island? (laughs) And Valentine's Day says, we're supposed to say that it resides in your heart, but really it's in a wormhole that's behind the good time. Chinese." (laughs) (laughs) And she goes, oh, great. The holidays came to get Chinese food, and they're like, don't be ridiculous. They came to start a band. (laughs) And I love it. I love that the band is like the most ridiculous description of a genre. It's like punk electronic hip hop. He goes, they've got a little bit of a hip hop punk electronica vibe. (laughs) I think it was, uh, I can't remember if it was Christmas or Guy Fox Day at the end, who's like, we're about to change the world of electronica. (laughs) (laughs) After we had already heard them play, and it was like, awful but then the other line that i absolutely love is uh and you text me the lead into this line where jane asks is anybody bothered that none of this This makes makes any sense sense?" yeah and daria goes nope this has been the best christmas halloween guy fox day saint patrick's (laughs) president's day ever (laughs) those little moments are very like you and I are both huge community fans. Yeah. The premise of this episode could work in community. 100%. Certain things about this episode stick out to me still to this day. Like, to me, I love how every time they talk about how if they don't get these holidays returned back to holiday land, there's going to be no more Christmas, no more Halloween, and no more Guy Fox Day. And every single time someone's like, no Guy Fox Day! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I uh, I love the fact that when Cupid's trying to convince anybody of anything, he turns into basically Barry White and uh, <laughs> like baby making music starts hitting in the background. And St. Patrick's Day is getting increasingly more annoyed with the. Well, he has the, the one line he goes, You don't sound anything like Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> There's a line that I think about all the time, and I've used it on Friends before, but yeah. it's when they don't think that Daria is cool, and Jane goes, Daria is really cool. Come on, Daria, do something cool. <laughs> and she offers to buy pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Daria is super cool. <laughs> There's also the, the most Daria line in this episode is when they go to Holiday Land. Jane goes, it's just like high school. And Daria goes, I feel like we're going to be saying that for the rest of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the Daria wit. Like, that's yep. that's what the show is known for. That's, like, the only line that you get that really is, like, in that vein. But I was doing some research on the Daria wiki. Okay. With the writer of the show said th- about the episode, it was crazy. Like, so crazy, I might have to go back and look at it because it was such a weird episode. <laughs> but they just... You know, they did whatever. So here's the reputation. This is what it says for reputation of the episode. Okay. For the longest time, many Daria fans considered Depth Takes a Holiday one of the worst episodes ever written. A bulk of the complaints come from the fact that it's off-canon nature of the episode, and there's no disclaimer of any kind that this is a dream or some type of figment of Daria's imagination. It is one of only two Daria episodes that a number of fans view as non-canon, the other one being the equally silly Daria musical. Depth is the one that is more often dumped on. However, there's a growing segment of the fandom that appreciates Depth Takes a Holiday for its creativity and its general wackiness. As time goes on, you're more and more likely to see people admit in public that they kind of liked it. It's been valuable to to certain fan fiction authors that cannot be understated. And what I ended up reading was that, obviously, every fandom has their fan fiction. Yeah, that's what I'm sitting here. I'm like, oh my god, Daria has fan fiction? And now I want to go read it. And is it gross? Because I don't want to get that far into this. Well, so what I see in here is that literally this has like opened up such a wonderful wormhole for Daria fan fiction writers. Because they can write stories about what happens in Holiday Land. Or they can do like... All this different crazy shit with this. It it seems like it somehow, in retrospect, has turned into, like, that opens up so many more possibilities because, like, what can you do with, like, Daria fan fiction when it's so tied to reality? Yeah. But it's like, well, now we've entered this one fantastical moment where it's up to your debate, did it happen or didn't it happen? But if it did happen... What other fantastical things could also be happening in Lawndale? I guess our takeaway from this is that Death Takes a Holiday creates the Daria multiverse. Yes, uh, 100%. (laughs) Guys, you heard it here first. Here's my prediction. Next week's episode of WandaVision, Daria is making an appearance. (laughs) We can only hope. We skipped over my favorite line in the episode, and it's when the, and this is because I grew up going to a Catholic school and everything else. When they get to Holiday Island and they go to the high school and they see just a bunch of people in white walk by (laughs) and they're all like, I think I can't remember if it's Daria or Jane, but one of them goes like, who is that? And they're like, oh, that's (laughs) those are all the different saint days. Who can keep up with those? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> which someone pointed out in the in the daria wiki trivia they're like it seems that valentine's day and saint patrick's day have forgotten that they are also saints yes there's yes. one other joke that i wrote down that i i think really hit for me for whatever reason it's so stupid but it's they take daria and jane to the mall to show them what the ramifications are going to be of them not having christmas yeah and everything and he's like look at all that Halloween candy that's just going to go to waste and they're like whatever kids have too many cavities and they're like well look at all these toys that kids aren't going to get for Christmas and they're like whatever kids are too materialistic and they're like besides like what's going to happen with Guy Fox Day going on and Jane goes oh no and it cuts over and it's a kidney <laughs> pie stand that's been shut down oh my god it's such like weird british humor just inserted into this american cartoon it's, that i absolutely it's very hate. strange i i mean the thing that i've found with daria because i during the pandemic i did a big old daria rewatch it's such a relaxing easy show yeah like it they're is. so sh- they're so short they're so concise you could just like leave it on in the background do other things jump in jump out like you don't it's not that serialized like it's a little it's more serialized than cartoons were at that time but still yeah. like not to the level of like the last couple seasons of South Park or or anything like that. And there's something very comforting, I want to say, with Daria. Like 
Like it's one of those, I, I use this way too much and I, I, I'm trying to find another analogy, but I'll, I'll say it again. It's a, it's a warm blanket to me. Like it's one yeah. of those shows where as I'm watching it, I'm remembering being a kid watching it. Like this was a really, I watched Daria a lot during like junior, senior year of high school and freshman year of college because it used to play all the time on MTV. Yep. And I remember my sophomore year was when the movie finale ended and I actually watched it and taped it. I would watch that tape over and over and over again. Uh, and then whenever I'd see that MTV was doing like a Daria marathon for like the next, the last two years of high school, I'd be like, oh shit, I got nothing to do. I'm going to watch a whole ton of Daria. The DVD is incredible. Like they finally yeah. put out the complete series on a DVD and they basically had to go through and meticulously pull out every piece of background music and rewrite songs that sounded similar to what the original songs were because it was MTV. MTV could put whatever the fuck yeah. they put musically back there. So like, I guarantee that when St. Valentine is talking all sexy on MTV, it was probably actual Barry White music yeah, probably. Playing in the background, but they were like, well, we can't, that's going to cost us a fortune to spend on all these Barry White songs for this 20 minute cartoon when we could just get like a dude to lay down a funky bass riff and call it a day. And that makes me curious. I, I assume when they put like Beavis and Butthead on like DVD, did they not include the music video segments? So I have all the Beavis and Butthead DVDs. Mm -hmm. They only, so the DVDs would come out and it would be 50 shorts of Beavis and Butthead. So it'd be like the little animated segments. And then each DVD came with like 15 music videos. Okay. Like it was like, they had to go and get the approval from the different artists. So like some of the classic, classic Beavis and Butthead videos just aren't on there. Yeah. And it's like kind of a bummer. I mean, in my opinion, that was the best part. Of Beavis and Butthead. Oh, for like, sure. I, 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 I could care less about, like, the actual, like, situations they got in. We'll get into the Beavis and Butthead Christmas episode okay. one of these days. But I have that on VHS. And I bought that on VHS because none of the DVDs came with the music videos. And the music videos are so great in that specific special that I'll have to, like... Come over with a VCR and yeah. a tape and be like, we're going to oh. watch this tape and then discuss. Number one. Dude, don't assume that I don't have a VCR. <laughs> <laughs> we come from the same world. So if nothing else, am I going to, you know, sometimes we'll ask this question. Is this something that you're going to watch every year? No, no, of course not. No. This but, is but I will say, Christmas special. <laughs> honestly, I will say, um, like you just said, as soon as this episode ended, I didn't turn Daria off. Yeah. I kept watching. <laughs> like, like, because you, it's such an easy show to just keep on you can do other things you can still keep up with what's going on on the screen i think the next episode was about daria's sister and her best friend like fighting over who's throwing a dance <laughs> I love the it. other the other big thing that i do want to talk about with this episode because i just remembered it so Brittany and kevin the cheerleader and football player and daria yeah. always have incredibly dumb scenes yes and there's always a lot of like weird innuendo throughout those scenes and in this one they the <laughs> st patrick's day and valentine's day decide that dari is not going to help them so they need to find someone else and they talk to kevin and Brittany, and they're like we need you to convince somebody of something and Brittany goes oh he's really good at that he convinces me to do stuff i don't want to do all the time <laughs> <laughs> so fucked up but it's like so on brand for like what this show is about yeah at, at its core it's about how shitty high school can be and how dumb some of the people that you graduate with were it's true and we don't even like we haven't even touched on the b plot of this episode which it's is not like, really important oh <laughs> but come on like so cupid shoots daria and quinn's parents with arrows trying to convince her that like he's real and Quinn spends the rest of the episode trying to prevent her parents from having sex, basically, <laughs> because she knows if they have a new baby, she just won't be be as popular anymore. That is true, because there's the scene where she's hanging out with the fashion club, and they're like, Quinn, is is everything okay? And she's like, must stop my parents. And she, they're like, well, what about that weird girl that lives with you? Can, can she help? No, she has holidays. <laughs> Yeah, so so no, I won't watch this. I will not. This will not be added to like, oh my God, I got to make sure I watch Daria this, <laughs> this season. But it has made me want to sit down and watch from the beginning. 
yeah, you can knock it out. It's like, yeah. I think it's like 60 episodes total. Yeah. 20 minutes a piece. That's not, that's like two weekends. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. All right. Well, Dylan, as always, happy Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving, St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> Valentine's Day, President's Day, Guy Fox Day. And as, as, as you had already alluded to, that is a line that could come straight out of community. So I will follow up with, uh, happy semester and a merry new one. <laughs> oh, whoa, oh, oh, now we won't stop till the big ball drops on New Year's. Happy, happy, happy holiday. Have a great, great, great holiday. Have a merry, 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 happy holiday. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.